Welcome to Stocking the Pantry with Hal. It's a series of videos, articles, and my ramblings produced in cooperation with the Point Defiance Ruston Senior Center. Our goal is to provide information and resources to help everyone to be better prepared and reduce food waste. So let's get started. Today we're going to be continuing our uh, series working with dehydrators and also continuing the sub-series of using them to make low-carb snacks and desserts. And today we're going to be exploring making different types of chips. I think pretty much all of us have seen or heard of kale chips and in the past the ones that I've uh, found and people have made I thought have been really boring. But I started to do some research and discovered a couple of sites that have maybe 50 or 60 different recipes using everything from small eggplants up to tomato slices, kale with different kinds of cheese, all kinds of interesting uh, chips and snacks that are all low carb. So today we're going to be making one particular recipe and then giving you links to about 22 other recipes. But I also wanted to show off today something that I recently got, a little gift to myself. It's a nice model of mandolin. And this is the guard that you want to be sure and remove. And what the mandolin does is it assists you to quickly make even and consistent slices. Now they're very, very sharp, so you want to be careful. And they're like chain mail gloves that you can get if you're really worried about that. But I always just set the rule for myself of paying close attention to what I'm doing. And so I often won't even talk when I'm trying to use something this sharp. So it has different guards that you put into when it's like this that allow you to control the width. Now this is a three millimeter that goes all the way down to 1.5 and up to seven. And then they also have blades that you would swap out that would do different sizes of shredding. So to demonstrate it, I start with rather a long piece, make sure my hands are out of the way. And when it gets down quite a ways, this would push down onto it and it has these nice little spikes that hold it. So once you get all these great slices made, you're going to want to mix up the coating that goes on it. And this one is incredibly simple. It's uh, extra virgin olive oil. And then this is white balsamic vinegar something I didn't have in my cabinet. And every once in a while when I run across something I haven't tried, I'll pick it up for the production value. And I need to check with my accountant and see if that means I can write it off or not. And then also coarse sea salt, which I just buy in bulk at a natural foods providing. There are also recipes where you can put in a little bit of granulated garlic or onion powder and there are more complicated ones, which some of the other recipes that we'll refer you to have things in it like finely, finely grated Parmesan cheese. So once you have that coating, you want to go ahead and mix, kind of toss around the pieces in a bowl with a mixture of the vinegar and the olive oil. And then you want to take and spread them out evenly on a tray. Now these are a little bigger than what I found uh, or in the store. I searched through a lot of them. But I'm really looking forward to summer when I can go out to my garden and just pick them when they get to be, oh, maybe a quarter of an inch bigger. Because usually the seeds haven't formed at that size. And that will give you good sized chips. The last step is whatever the salt or salt and herb cheese mixture you're using is to sprinkle a little bit on each one 
I find pretty much all the recipes suggest a lot more salt than I normally use. So you can adjust that to your own taste. Of course, once it's on and been dehydrated into it, that's the way it is. But for your next batch, put it in, set the dehydrator for about 135 degrees and they pretty much have all have temperature and time controls and probably in post-production this will be where we'll put in a little picture <laughs> of those controls for you but you run it for anywhere from 6 to 14 hours depends on how much humidity is in the air and then when you're done this is just a half batch that we made these were very small zucchini so bigger ones will make bigger chips but you can i'll try and be quiet if you can hear that they do come out very crisp very tasty but i hear you say or at least thinking what if i don't have a dehydrator so if you don't have a dehydrator and don't want to rush right out and buy one uh, any oven that can get down to 200 degrees or even lower than that will work for you. It just takes a lot longer. So for example, and I've never tried this before, but I made some of the ones that are tomato, parsley, and uh, Romano cheese. And these were done in the oven, so I think they're a little darker than they would usually come out. Um, and I, my oven will only go down as far as 200 degrees. And after eight hours, even though it said that it should be six, four to six, I took them out and put them on the dehydrator trays and finished them up there. So I think in the future, I, mm, I'll try it again, but I'm certainly going to start off with the dehydrator. Uh, and these are tasty, really tasty. But once again, I'll warn you that flavors concentrate. And so even though I cut the amount of salt in half, uh, they're still a little too salty for me. So that's all there is to it. They're very simple, lots of potential variations. And if you're um, needing to reduce carbs in your diet or just want some kind of an interesting alternative, uh, please go uh, to our recipe page. Uh, the link is in the introduction uh, on Facebook, but also the link will be on the notes at the end. Thank you for sharing this time with us. If you'd like more information about the Center for Food Preservation Arts, including more recipes, check out our website at preservefoods.blogspot.com and follow us on Facebook so you get notifications of upcoming articles, videos, and events. And we hope to see you back here for our next virtual canning party.